Don't forget to welcome everybody back. I won't. <laughs> hey, welcome to uh, almost October in Oregon. As you can probably tell, I'm already freezing my little patootie off. Uh, I am not a winter girl by any stretch of the imagination. But we thought we'd come and talk to you today about um, retirement, um, like planning for retirement, kind of what we did right what we did wrong, what we wish we had done different. Maybe it'll help you guys out in planning for your retirement. I think overall we did a, a good job, but it could have been better. There's definitely some things we, we yes. could have done better, for sure. I went in the lottery. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Depends. How big is that lottery? <laughs> you got to buy a ticket? You do. Damn it. That's always been our big problem. I know. You know buy the tickets, you don't win the money. <laughs> uh, so, basically what's happened here is we've had, and my, I'll, I'll start with mine, I guess. Um, I've had three main employers throughout my career, working career. Um, my first one I didn't contribute to, and... I was there for a little over 14 years. They contributed after I'd been there probably five or six years. They started a retirement program. And when I left there, and I think it was 92, probably, 93, I only had like 5,000 in it. So it wasn't great, but... You know, it's better than nothing. My second um, employer, I was only there a little over eight years. And I was contributing to it also. And it was a pretty good one. They had a good retirement set up for us. And that that was probably the second best retirement that I had. Was that at the mill? That was at the steel mill, yeah. Huh. So. Oh, you did contribute. I did. That's what we're living on now. I know. <laughs> we dipped in early. So my last one, I worked for the city of Carleton for just about 18 years. And give or take, numbers aren't that big of a deal on that. And I also contributed. Well, they had two different kinds. They had one from the city. And then what was the other one? It's called an IAP and yeah, an IAP, which is like working for the state, basically. So I didn't get in on tier one, tier two, or I believe there was a tier three. I was the next one. So contributing there. So I, I had, I've got five different retirements basically coming in right now. None of them are you know, a lot of money, but they're all helping. I got to retire early. And as it was due to health problems, I would have had to have retired early anyway. But I just kind of wish that we would have, it would have happened and, and waited a couple more weeks. I either would have kept working or... It would have been this... <laughs> so much better shape. Yeah, and the health <laughs> issues would have been a couple of weeks earlier because then I could have went on disability at least. So, But anyway, so mine, we're doing good on mine. However, I feel that I should have contributed more. Um, when you do contribute in the systems that I was in, they're before tax and it didn't make that big of an impact on my pay, your bring home pay. So you can, I don't know, like say like 10%, you're only going to notice maybe a 3% difference in your take home pay if you put 10% in. So it's, that's what I recommend it. Just make, make sure you're putting some in for yourself because there's no guarantee that, you know, Social Security is going to be there, um, which is also helping us out right now. I filed early on that. There's debate on Social Security whether or not you should wait until you're 
67 or do it at 62 and everything I'm learning is it takes I believe it was around eight years if you wait to make it a wash if you start early you know make it equal out well our thought on that was am I gonna live another eight years you don't know so <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it depends on what I do in the house. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yeah. So, so we decided to start taking it early. So at least I'm going to get something back out of it. And we'll still be fine with the other retirements and stuff. And by the time the other retirements run out, um, we're not going to be traveling like we are now. You know, we'll be a lot more fragile and staying at home more. And this has been our plan yes. all along. Sitting in our rocking chair, sucking our thumb. That's what we'll be doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Or <laughs> drinking a drink. Well, I'm just saying. Maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> now with Retta. Hi, Thor. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get our dog kisses in. <laughs> hey, Timber. Hey. Every 10 minutes. Okay, get in. All right, get thank you. There you go. <laughs> yep, stay down now. So now I'll let Retta kind of give you her history on what she's done for retirement. Um, I didn't start any retirement of any kind until I was about 35 when I went to work out at the mill. Um, and they automatically put in 10% of my wages the entire time I was there. So that was a huge benefit um, just by itself. Um, and I didn't have to contribute any if I didn't want to. They still put in 10%. A lot of employers I know will match like maybe up to 10%. Uh, this was not a match program. It was simply um, a benefit of my employment there, which was a really nice benefit. In addition to that, I put in 10% of my wages there uh, from the moment that I started working there. I had 10% going into my retirement fund. So by the time I was laid off in like 2009, I actually had, even with the, um, like the, the market crash that happened and it took about half of my retirement savings, um, I lost in that market crash. Even with all of that, I still had a a fairly decent, you know, little chunk of change in there. So that was our saving grace because when I got laid off, I actually started drawing from my retirement fund because um, after unemployment ran out, I, I didn't have anything else to live on. And, eh, you know, I wasn't going back to work. So, um, <laughs> so that's well, what, not for someone else, <laughs> right? Not for someone else. I did go back to work for myself, but at that point in time, I was not making any money. So uh, we pulled on that to live on. And that is one thing that I wish we had done different is that I had just left it alone and, and we could have, you know, eaten beans and rice instead of, uh, instead of pulling out of my retirement. Um, I think that would have been better for us. Um, and then I also started drawing Social Security at 62. Uh, again, who knows how long you're going to live? Why would I wait? So that's what we did. And I figured the, the difference, it wasn't enough to not let me draw. And then, again, because we needed it at that point in time, and then a little bit further down the road, I actually started making money in my own business. So I didn't need it as bad. But, you know, life is what it is. So, yes. Well, and by you taking money out of your retirement made your quality of life lot better absolutely you didn't have to answer to the man anymore and you were able to do your own thing and you know that means a lot so i know there's a lot of people out there too that feel like they've got to work until they're 70 and you know if that's if that's you that's fine it wasn't me and it wasn't retta no uh -uh. um because it's you know every day may be your last you know at any date might be your last so we're kind of living for the moment and what we'll be fine for the rest of our lives you know we have five kids and we may go live with one of them 
Or right? all of them. Right? Yeah. They can pass us around <laughs> like the, you know, marshmallows at a campfire or something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> that hurt your little feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, we're going to just take it. I mean, we got the house. We can still sell the house as we get older. Um, we've already over doubled our money in just the 10 years we've been here with the value of our house. So we're going to have good equity in it. You know, the house is really too big for us, but we love the location. Yeah. You're like, no, <laughs> you know, it's, what is it? Four bedroom, three bath with the half daylight basement. So someday we'll give you a tour of it that not today. Mm -mm. No. Um, so it's back to the retirement. Squirrel. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure that little <laughs> son of a you-know-what's going to get me again. <laughs> so but, for things that I wish I had done different, like I said, I, I wish I had not um, dipped into my retirement. I wish I had put more into my retirement. That 10% that I was putting in, especially since I started it right at the beginning of my job, I I never noticed it. It did not make a whit of difference to me um, whether I had that taken out or not. So I could have actually put in another 10% and I'd have probably been better. Um, we are not, you know, financial gurus by any means. So if, you know, if you're financially savvy and you know where to put your money in, where it might be safer. And I just put mine in a, in a 401k and someone else managed it and i never all i did was say here you manage it i don't want i don't know anything about this and it probably would have been a lot smarter if i'd have known more about it but um and i might have moved some of my funds around when i knew that the crash was coming because everybody did know that the crash was coming uh didn't know exactly when it's you can't really time the market like that um but I might have moved some of it to safer places if I'd have been smarter about it. Um, starting earlier, that would, I mean, if there's anybody out there who's, you know, in their 20s, uh, take this one piece of advice. Start, start adding to your retirement now. You won't notice it. And when you get to retirement age and you actually have a really nice nest egg out there, you'll thank me. I'll be dead, but you'll thank me. <laughs> <laughs> I know my grandmother, when I first got my first job back in 79, she told me, Lynn, just take $5 a paycheck and put it in the bank. And I went, okay, I'm going to do that. <laughs> Never did it. And if I look back now, you, you figure that out. I got paid every week. And if you start doing some math on that and then compounding the interest and everything, in that 14 years I was there, I wouldn't notice $20 a month. So live and learn, you know, of course, when you're back that young, if you move out right away, you got expenses and it's, it's even worse now to try and make it on your own than it was when I first moved out. Yeah. Now it would be really hard to do that, but you could still go with the $5, you know, 40 years later. Um, if you just put $5 in per paycheck, even if it's only $10 a month, it's it's a start. And then as you get more secure, as you get older, then you can add to that. Now, I'm not advising you to do this, but, you know, that's I what start, I would, yeah, start that's what I would have money done. Away. Yes, definitely. Um, and so for a lot of people... You know, our, our dollar is devaluing all the time. So a lot of people may think, well, you know, my cash would be better used for other things. If you don't feel like socking it away in a bank or in a 401k, at least like buy assets of some kind. You know, something that, that's going to have value, um, real estate, gold, silver, you know, those those type of things, they're going to hold their value. So you could always go that route. And the other thing um, about like the gold and silver part is you don't 
you don't want to just buy it and then somebody says, oh, yeah, you have it. Now, you, you want it in your hand. Because um, there's, <laughs> it's kind of like our money in the bank. You know, if the bank fails, your money is gone. Well, if the gold and silver people fail, your gold and silver is gone. So it's got to be something that yeah, something you that control. you control. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, absolutely. My I'd... oh, I was gonna say my first retirement, like I said, was only five thousand um, dollars. I put it in a safe um, IRA and. Unfortunately, the company, and I'm not going to mention names, but that did it, I pretty much lost everything. I think we finally got it built back up to around $1,200 before I finally decided, you know what, I'm never going to get anything off of this. And we had to put a roof on our house, so we took it out to pay for that. So, because the money I was gaining back would have been less than the interest I would have been paying on a loan to put the roof on our house. So there are other ways of, you know, I guess putting towards your retirement, that would be a good example too. If you're not getting anything for your money, then you might as well put it somewhere where you are. And that new roof on the house helped us sell our house. It's true. So. Yeah. That that's just a, yeah, another example of an asset, yeah. as opposed to having your money in a bank. But <clears throat> let's see. Did we do anything else right? Oh, another thing we absolutely did wrong is we didn't plan for um, health insurance. You know, you work for somebody else for many many years, and they always provide health insurance, and so that's not really something that I ever thought about or looked into until Lynn had retired and we absolutely had to have it or we're looking at, you know, a hundred thousand plus hospital bill for his, um, for his triple bypass. Um, so that was one thing that I, I really didn't, I kind of factored it in a little bit, but, um, I should have factored it in a lot. So, unfortunately, you need to think about things like that, and yeah. I didn't. Well, and I, I retired on March 31st, and the big joke was that I gave one year's notice. So, on April 1st, I told my boss that I was going to leave March 31st of the next year, kind of like as an April Fool's thing. And I told him, I'm not, I'm not joking, I'm serious, because I like to joke a lot. And I told him I'm very serious. Well, he for a couple of months he didn't really believe me, and then the more I talked about retirement, he realized that the joke would be on him on April first because mm. I wasn't coming in. <laughs> ah, so, yeah. So, and I am going somewhere with this. Two weeks after I retired, I started feeling bad. So. We went in, I had to go in, and 17 days after I retired, I had a triple bypass. And that's where I was saying that if it would have been a couple of weeks either way, you know, it would have been a lot better than what happened. But at the time, we didn't have insurance. I was so close. I guess what I should say is, yeah, I was so close to the time that I retired, we hadn't gotten the insurance paperwork back from my job because I can roll my insurance over. That's the way the insurance policy was that we had, but we hadn't received it yet. So, you know, you're let you're laying there on your deathbed. Okay. Maybe not my deathbed. <laughs> and then, uh, you find out you don't have any insurance. That's a little bit hard to take, but they were really good with us at the hospital. And I guess what I'm saying is, you got to plan for that, too. If you do have good insurance now, there will be a lapse in there until you get your other insurance reinstated, which whichever plan you go with, whether it's through your work or 
um, another plan or Oregon Health Plan or whatever you know it is that you go with, even Social Security, all that stuff takes a little bit of time. So we got very fortunate and whoa. Hey, you cannot have my wine. <clears throat> it wasn't that. You just should have seen the camera. Did it, did it oh, shake? Yeah, it shook really hard. <laughs> anyway, I don't think I got anything else to add about do's Except and me don'ts. me kicking and... the table that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> you just got to kind of figure out what works the best for you. But just making sure you contribute is the big thing. And I'm very, I'm going to apologize now for the the great camera work from the dog and me kicking the table here. We got both <laughs> dogs by us. Um, and also apologize for the background noise. We are uh, sitting out on our floating deck under the gazebo looking back towards our house. It's actually behind the trees behind us there, the banana tree and the, oh, whatever that other one is there. Maple. Red twig dogwood and then there's a red maple tree back behind us and but anyway so the road is only a block away the main road into our town here and we're about well, from here we're about eight feet from our property line so we decide this would be a good place to come it's been raining all day so we thought well let's get undercover to do this but if you got any Anything that you would like to add in the comments, that would be great. Um, again, we're not we're not professionals, we're not bankers or No, this is just what we did and we're trying to, you know, show you some of the, the pitfalls of not planning properly. And yeah. maybe some some little tips, especially if you're still young enough to uh to start things to get your ball rolling. Yeah. Yep got to start somewhere so hopefully this was helpful hopefully yeah and, and next time i don't know what? next week no, no not i was yet. gonna say next time we see you we'll be in a sunny location but no we got one more week after that it might it might be sunny here next week <laughs> <laughs> probably not though <laughs> Yeah, the sun's the sun's gonna be few and far between now. Huh. And oh, anyway, don't don't forget to subscribe too. So I'll I'll say it like the other YouTubers. I've noticed by looking at the uh, ratings and stuff that most of you aren't subscribed to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Total BS because I don't even know what they're talking about. But, <laughs> anyway, it, I do know that it does help if you do subscribe and, and like it. And if you feel like sharing it, I'm not sure we're there yet, or you feel like sharing. <laughs> <laughs> the more practice we get, the better at this will be. But I do want to thank all of you for uh, tuning in. And if you got suggestions, put them in the comments and we'll be glad to look at them. And, and anybody who's actually watched this all the way from the beginning, God bless you. <laughs> Uh, oh, well. oh, well, we'll get there. We will. All right. So signing off. Yep. I keep the moisture keeps dripping on my shirt. It looks like I'm slobbering. You probably are. Oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> when you're retired. It's always five o'clock. <laughs>